One of the biggest fears I hear artists express is that loose, expressive painting just won't sell as well as super tight, highly realistic art. It means that as artists, we often feel torn between making the kind of work that we love and the kind of work that we think people want to buy. This can be especially tough when you want to paint full time in retirement, whether you want to supplement your income or you simply want to fill your days in the studio doing what you love or something in between. It's natural to feel this pressure of, well, to be proud of my work or for my work to sell, it just can't be that loose. People will think a child could have made that. The truth is that some people are always going to believe that loose painting is easier to make, even though it is often the exact opposite. Painterly art that captures the impression of what you want to see without all of the literal details is actually much more challenging to make. But the people who value expressive painting are out there. So whether your goal is to sell or to be able to confidently call yourself an artist, justify a life spent in the studio, or simply feel proud of what you create, I'm going to walk you through the steps to make it happen in this video. The very first thing that I would recommend getting clear on is what is your big goal exactly? Is it to feel like a quote real artist? If so, what does a real artist mean exactly? Is it to make work that you're proud of? If so, what kind of work do you need to be making? What does it need to look like for you to feel proud of it? Is it to spend your days in the studio or out painting on location or attending model sessions confidently? If so, what can you do right now to make that happen? Is it to have a community of other artists who look to you as a peer or a professional or someone they simply look up to? Or is it truly about selling? For artists looking for peer marketing advice, this question could seem like a waste of time, but I have found that for the overwhelming majority of artists, your true motivation isn't really about the money, which means that in order for you to feel truly satisfied, we need to figure out what really is motivating you so that you can instead plan on how to reach that goal. If you realize that your underlying motivation is to feel like a real artist, I would actually ask you why you don't feel like a real artist right now. Go ahead and let me know in the comments what your rationale is if this has become a sticking point for you. Sometimes it is as simple as having an artist you trust call you an artist, or just getting over this mental block and calling yourself an artist on your own. Other times it really does come down to helping you to make work that you're proud of. That's what makes you feel like a real artist. And in that case, I think identifying what your goal is for your work is the logical next step. You know, what does work that you would be proud of actually look like? In many cases, this is a very loose painterly approach to oil painting. And if that looseness is what you are drawn to, then that's what we really need to work you toward. You're going to feel like your goal is at odds with your actual practice if what you'd be really proud to make is very loose and painterly, but what you keep making is very tight and very photorealistic. The reason that I bring this up when we talk about selling, beyond the fact that so many people talk about selling when they really mean something that is deeper and less commercial in nature, is that the biggest driver of selling your work is how you put your work out in the world. And if you do not feel confident in the work that you are making, or it doesn't feel like work that you are excited about, it's going to be very difficult to put that work out into the world with excitement that becomes infectious to other people enough that they actually want to buy it. To illustrate what I mean, I want you to imagine that you are going out to an art fair or an open studio and you know that you can buy some art. You have your checkbook ready. You're just waiting to see if the perfect piece jumps out at you. And to your delight, you actually find that there are two pieces that stand out that you're really interested in taking home. And better yet, you can actually afford them, but you can only afford one of them. So you decide to talk to each of the artists who is there, and one of them is just so excited that you love this painting because it is their favorite piece that they have ever made. And they can't wait to walk you through what the entire process was to make that piece, from the dream they had that gave them the idea for this painting, to setting up the model, to practicing with warm-up pieces, all until they sat down at their easel to create this piece and all of the brush strokes just came together in a way that surprised even them. Now, let's say the second artist that you talk to feels a little embarrassed about this painting and you can tell. Like, they're already kind of apologizing for it. They seem glad that you're interested in it, but they're like, oh, you know, I'm glad to hear you say that because I almost didn't think about bringing this piece. It was a real 
struggle to make. And I just, I'm just really happy to hear that you like it. Which of these two paintings are you more likely to be excited to take home? Which of these two pieces would make you feel the best about taking out your checkbook to write this artist a check so that you can take that painting home. I think this gets lost so often when we talk about loose versus tight painting in terms of what sells. Ultimately, what sells really comes down to what you are going to be most genuinely proud of. So once you're clear on what your motivation is, the very next step that I would recommend, regardless of what motivation is driving you, is to get really clear on what your work needs to look like for you to feel proud of it, for you to feel like a real artist, for you to feel proud putting this out in the world, for you to feel proud to offer it up for sale. Now, if getting to this point was a challenge or you still aren't entirely sure what your true motivation is, I think actually spending some time doing some journaling around this can be really helpful. I like to frame this as something like Julia Cameron's morning pages, if you are familiar with those. Essentially, those are three stream of consciousness pages of journaling that you produce in one sitting that are meant to be kind of a brain dump. Forcing yourself to write continuously like this can often uncover things like unconscious motivations or really to iron out what hierarchy of goals you actually have. Maybe selling is important, but it's not your top priority. This is often where that kind of decision making can become very clear. But once you know what your true motivation is and you know what you need your work to look like in order to satisfy that goal, the very next step would be to figure out what exact skills are standing in your way of being able to create that sort of work. If you want to know what this next big step of the process looks like, I already have a video all about this. It walks you from how to identify what your goal is all the way to knowing what exercises to put in and how to make your practice sustainable until your skills are no longer holding you back from creating the work that you want to create. I'll link that in the upper right hand corner so that you can check it out. And if your goal is to paint full time in retirement, I have one other video that I would absolutely recommend you take a look at. Once you have all of the skills necessary to produce work that you are proud of, the final piece of the puzzle is for you to actually assemble a body of work that is ready to sell. And whether your work is very tight and photorealistic, or your work is incredibly loose, painterly, and impressionistic, once you have that body of work, the strategies to sell these paintings do not differ. If you would like to watch through my video on how to actually start making money from your work once you have that body of work assembled, I will link that video in the upper right hand corner as well. All right, let me know in the comments what questions you have about being able to build a painting career on loose paintings that you are proud of and overcome that pressure to tighten up your work. This is, after all, what I specialize in. I help oil painters go from stuck to creating their dream body of artwork so that they can fall in love with their painting practice and feel proud of the work that they create. So I'm eager to hear from you so that I can answer more of your questions in upcoming videos. And if you're interested in getting help on this journey and you think that I might be a good fit for that help, I would love to hear from you. I have details on my mentorships down in the description, as well as a link to see if we might be a fit to work together. All right, until next time, happy painting.